Nikon Canada sent me the new Nikon 1 V3 mirrorless camera bundle, complete with detachable EVF and hand grip to try out. They also sent me my choice of available lenses, so I picked the 18.5mm f1.8 and the FT1 adapter. I've been wanting to try out these accessories for a long time, so I was excited to have the opportunity. If I had to distill the Nikon 1 V3 camera down into one word, it would be capable. The camera is amazingly versatile. The overall design is pretty slick. I like that it has got the PSAM dial and lots of external controls. As a manual mode DSLR shooter, I like having access to the exposure dials at all times. And the V3 is very accessible in this regard. pop-up flash is really handy and does a great job. I like the R2-D2 inspired flip-up design. It does TTL, which will be the default setting for most users, but it also does manual so you can control your flash output exactly as you wish. The only downside is that there's no control for using off-camera speed lights in Nikon's awesome creative lighting system. Maybe a future firmware update might fix this. The EVF is really nice to look through, but I always found that I would just compose my photos with the back LCD screen alone. I still don't like the proprietary hot shoe that hasn't changed since the very first V1 was introduced. A regular industry standard hot shoe would make me oh so happy. The side compartment has the HDMI, micro USB and micro SD slot. Does the micro SD slot bother me? Nah, not really. I think it's a great space saver and they have some really decent read and write speeds now. If you already had a bunch of standard SD cards and had to go buy a micro SD card, well that might be a bit of a bummer. But if you were getting the V3 as like a first camera, it wouldn't really be a concern. I wanted to do a comparison of my original V1 opposed with the V3. We'll leave the V2 out of this as it's far too much like Mario Bros. 2, the weird oddball in between the classics. Size-wise, they are very close. The V3 is smaller and sleeker, especially with the redesigned kit lens. The first generation kit lens was a bit of a pig, and the new one is sleek and splendid, just like the overall feeling of the V3. The V1 had the built-in EVF, but no built-in flash. The V3 has a built-in flash and an attachable EVF. To be honest, it starts to look like a bit of a Frankenstein camera with the extra grip and the EVF installed. But the option to strip it all back to a smaller pocketable camera is a very good thing. Turning the V3 on makes the lens extend. On the V1 you had to hold the button on the lens down and then twist it which was an extra cumbersome step and I'm glad they got rid of that. The soft touch rubber exterior of the hand grip is really really nice. It offers great grip ability and purchase even without the extra grip installed. I hope that all of the new Nikon digital SLRs are going to use this material. That, that soft and squishy feel is awesome. And the articulating screen is the bomb. All cameras should have this as a standard issue. It is so incredibly useful and versatile. Taking landscape shots from the ground or placing the camera above your head for a crowd shot, no problem. Move the screen wherever you want. It is awesome in every way and I'm so glad to see these screens in this current generation of digital SLRs from Nikon as well. And not only is it a flippy screen, it's also a touch screen. It is the touch generation. My kids loved taking pics with this thing the same way that you would do a smartphone. It's a cool feature, especially for macro work or tripod setups where you don't want to bump the camera to introduce camera shake. Touch the screen gently and you're golden. It works great. The FT1 adapter isn't really specific to the V3, but it is a must-have accessory to the Nikon 1 system. It makes this camera so incredibly capable and versatile, especially for the shooter who might already have some of Nikon's full frame or DX lenses. 
The crop factor of the small 1-inch CX sensor in the V3 gives amazing telephoto equivalent field of view advantages. This is really perfect for wildlife, or for close-up macro work, or for taking pictures at your kids' sporting events. Built-in Wi-Fi feature is super awesome, especially if you like posting your photos on social media. This is handy even in professional situations, like at a wedding, where you want to post some shots of the bride and groom on Instagram or web pics or whatever. The Wi-Fi sets up really easy and Nikon's free app works great. It's really simple, which is a good thing. You can easily view your photos that you took on the V3, select which ones you want, and then share away. But it may be a bit too simple. When using the app to take photos, you can't really control any of the exposure adjustments. It's basically just point and shoot. Perhaps full camera control will come to the app in the future. The Nikon One lenses are all incredibly light. They feel cheap and plasticky, especially the 18.5 millimeter. It's only 2.4 ounces though. It feels like it's not even there. This is perfect for the travel photographer who wants a low weight, low profile gear complement. Just don't buy a white lens for a black camera. It's going to look goofy. Of course, we want to know about image quality. I was super curious to see how it had improved from the V1. It's improved all right in every way. For such a small sensor, the Nikon magicians have been working their magic. The files are sharp, the colors are contrasty and rich, the skin tones are really great. How it handles metering and white balance is superb as well. There is really nothing not to like about the image quality. But the high ISO has always been the Achilles heel of small sensors. But I was really blown away by how great the V3 handles shots up to 6400 ISO. It's incredibly good. Fine detail starts to decrease around 1600, hair will begin to look mottled and such, but compared to my old D300S digital SLR camera, the V3 is better, I kid you not, it's outstanding. 12800 has got lots of nasty banding and color artifacts, but really I mean, who cares, nobody buys this camera to pixel peep, but you can if you want to, and the pixels are great, up to 3200 ISO, that's a marvel of technology. The action ability of this camera is tremendous. 60 frames a second. If you're a parent trying to nab the moment at your kid's soccer game, you're never going to miss it. But also for wildlife. I was trying to get some shots of these chickadees in the yard here to illustrate this, but it was minus 40 degrees Celsius and I chickened out. A little practice and a good tripod and this camera would be an incredibly capable wildlife camera. The video off this camera is really awesome. I recorded these Blue Jays through my picture window with my 70-200 f4 lens and the FT1 adapter. I'm happy with the quality, even through the window glass. It will do everything and more as a family video camera, for sure. So all in all, the V3 is an incredibly capable camera. It's versatile, at the same time simple. You can scale it up or down depending on your skill level and it will be right there with you. The image quality is great and very pleasing to the eye. The low light capability is good, especially when paired with that fast 1.8, 18.5mm Nikon 1 lens. That really is a must buy. I could nitpick a bit more, but I don't find any need to with this camera. It's an amazing, amazing camera and incredibly capable. If you're looking for a lightweight mirrorless option, don't write off the Nikon 1 V3. Try it out. I'm sure you're going to like it. One last big shout out to Nikon Canada for this awesome opportunity. Thank you very much.